What is up? It's the Fit Gear Hunter. Today, we're going to look at an in-depth analysis of the heart rate accuracy for the new Sunto race. We're going to look at it as steady state workouts. We're going to look at CrossFit high intensity workouts. And then I did a ton of work in evaluating the inaccuracy to see how it would change or affect some of your training analysis results. So if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I'm actually doing a bunch of different tests at the same time. So more reviews yet to come out. If you're new to this channel, I try to do three things. One, I try to test devices for higher intensity training, but a couple that with a review of the wellness and the recovery aspects, as well as the training analysis aspects. I try not to just say a feature a, white, a watch is promoting, make sure to compare it to others in the industry. And third, I try to, I have to, I have to kind of focus my time on content only. So the, they're going to be always no frills videos, no special effects in these videos, just focused on the content. So looking at the Sunto race, now I will say this, I'll say this again, I'll say this in every video. I have previously done an initial review, sort of like an overview of the full feature set that it's promoting. And now we're in the middle of the testing of all of those features to see if they're up to snuff with some of the competition on the market. And still to this day, this is one of my favorite designed watches I've ever tested. One of the best experiences, just one of the best looking to me, best size. And it is listed as feature rich, both on the wellness and recovery, the training and on the app. So it has got a ton to offer, but a lot of that on the training side hinges on the accuracy of the optical heart rate sensor. So if it can't keep up with tracking your true workout, especially in higher intensity workouts, then it's not possible to provide you quality feedback on your training this week versus last week, this hard workout, how hard was it? What kind of recovery time you need? So I have done a lot of work to try to look at this 14 different ways. Let, I'll say this in the beginning. It absolutely can connect to an external chest strap, connect, connect to an ECG chest strap, connect to an armband. It can connect to a Bluetooth heart rate sensor. So you can eliminate the question by connecting to one of those, but we got to look at it for what it's worth straight out of the box. So we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at number one, a series of charts. First, just a few workouts in more of a steady state monostructural workout style. Can it keep up with simple workouts? Then we're going to get into the CrossFit and high intensity interval workouts. These all included heavy lifting portions and then intense, what they call metabolic conditioning portions. So the hardest of all the workouts, we're going to see how it kept up in those extensive number of charts. Secondly, we're going to look at the analytical differences it would have had versus its own system. So I tracked it with a chest strap connected to a Sunto analytics, as well as the optical sensor built into the Sunto race and its own analytics. So we're going to look at max heart rate, the average heart rate, how it would have compared and the training stress score, which is your cardio load score, and then the recovery times. And then last, we're going to look at correlation graphs. We're going to see other industry leaders and how it compares like in perfect accuracy and how the Sunto race did. And then I'm going to bundle in all the data I had from the Sunto vertical, which is the same heart rate sensor into one major correlation graph. So with that all out of the way, let us dive into the data. All right, so first thing we're gonna start with steady state workouts and it, it did fairly well for some reason. It always took a while to lock on. That's two minutes in. So that's a pretty good amount of time to lock on to a steady state run here. This was mediocre, uh, you know, tragically, actually, this is, this wasn't terrible. Uh, it, heart rate is in the one thirties and I was doing some wrist flexion type work in the second half of this workout. Here was another steady state, uh, not super high heart rate, took a little, you know, took four minutes to lock on this time, but followed the flow of the workout. And so now for the CrossFit high intensity interval workouts, we'll see seven of those. Um, we have this first one that we looked at in the initial review, missed the lifting and missed most of the Metcon the intense portions. Here, this one did okay through the middle, although it obviously wasn't tracking exactly and then missed the intensity portion. Um, this one was especially difficult to see. Um, so it missed the lifting completely and horrifically missed, but tracked the pattern of the intensity portion. This was like 10 separate rounds, really brutal workout and got up to almost my max heart rate of 180 and didn't pick up any of it. Um, here, missed all the rounds, missed the Metcon, just missed. Um, here, maybe got a little bit closer, but this is 140 beats per minute heart rate, so not super high. 
And then the second half, this was like a double Metcon day, did not pick up the most intense portions. Again, missed the lifting, missed the intense portions, only, you know, just, just missed a lot. Um, same thing again with this one. Obviously, it, you know, it's kind of following the flow, but not really. Um, it's just missing the most intense peaks. So looking at it sort of in a chart-wise, like what were the max heart rate for each workout differences from a chest strap? So you can see that, you know, the values are there. Some, it actually, in my steady state workout, it actually got a peak heart rate that was off and opposite. And then the rest of the workout, it was max heart rates were peaking at much lower. So it's not capable of getting to the higher heart rates. Then the average heart rate differences, this is the whole workout. And so that gap in there between 120 beat per minute average and 100 um, is, is a big difference <clears throat> statistically huge difference in what it's going to show um, in the next up, the training stress. So this is the training load that flows into all your calculations for are you pushing yourself this week harder than you did last week and harder than you have in general. And so you can see differences, like little data points, you know, it, it did follow the general flow uh, somehow, even with the dysfunctional pieces to it, but 29% higher in one day and then 45% higher just in general on these low scores. So this is like your load per workout that's going to calculate into your overall volume, your overall load. Um, the recovery time estimate is not as big of a deal, but obviously if you do track that, I don't think the recovery time in the Sunto app in general, and I've thought this for a long time, is accurate. I think it's basically you take it times two. Um, or at least times one and a half. And that's more of an appropriate recovery time, especially with more advanced physiological units like Garmin. But just way off. You can see 11 hours versus one. So now we get into the correlation graph. So like this is like all the data points dumped into one graph. And if it was perfect agreement between the watch and the accurate chest strap, it'd be a diagonal line up the middle. And let's take a look back in time at some of the best. Uh, the Apple Watch, you get this tight little black line correlation of 0.98. The Phoenix 7 Pro, this is like just any of the Pro series, the most recent heart rate, Elevate 5.0 with Garmin, 0.962. That is statistically super high. The Maze Fit Balance, actually, that's that's really high. You can see it's getting some little hair as we get down the chart differences. And then you have a lot of hair with the Pace 3, so at 0.827. So all over the hair, it was hair is above, you know, it's like it went above at certain times, went below. And then you have the Sunto race. So this is the Sunto race. This is the final correlation graph of the workouts that I tracked across multiple workouts. Um, you can see that it mostly read low. And we saw that in all the graphs, it just picking up like huge. I mean, the fact that there's darkness in some of these circles when you have this many data points and they're this faint, each circle is super faint. But if you get darkness, that means that it's a lot reoccurring in that same problem. And um, so we can see that problem. And then I even threw in my old pass soon to vertical test. And this is the final for the multiple of tests I did with the soon to vertical and the race all combined, all the data. So 0 0.70. So obviously, if you compare it statistically compared to the other big leaders, you know, anything I think below 0.85 is not good in today's world. So the pace three, not good. Um, anything below 0.9 is really, you know, not ideal. And uh, obviously, you want to get like in the 0.95 to really have accurate uh, training load tracking and cardiovascular recommendations. So we can see that this is not trustworthy. You can look at all the charts. You know, if we go back and you look at the charts, you can just see like, ah, missed it, missed it, missed it, missed it, missed it, missed it. You know, so it just missed the intense, missed the workout, just missed the workout. It's just like, you, you know, you might as well just write in your own numbers. All right, so what do I think? In summary, it's clear they should bundle it with some sort of external heart rate monitor and sell it like that. There's no way they should promote this as being able to track a workout, much less an intense, high-intensity interval CrossFit training workout. I will say along with that, don't write off the Sunto race because it has a wealth of features that we're now still in, I'm still in the middle of testing to see if they offer value on the wellness and the recovery and the health and the life side of things coupled with the training side because you can connect this to a heart rate sensor you can get something out of it by that simple thing so don't write it off but in simple terms if you want any accurate information with training analysis 
the individual workout rigor analysis, you must connect this to an external heart rate sensor. It connects to Bluetooth only, it doesn't connect to Ant Plus. So do it. I have been, and I will say again in doing this thorough review of this watch because it does offer so much and it is a super competitive uh, price point and I like it a lot. I have been using it and connecting it to a chest strap and testing the actual value of the analytics when you have accurate heart rate tracking. So lots and lots and lots to come in the final review in the upcoming days. Again, this is the full analytical review for the heart rate accuracy and doing more intense workouts for the soon to race. It's a figure hunter. Thanks so much for watching.